What's up guys, B B Big Clive 34 coming at you today from Hot Rod Drag Week. Now, this van behind me, from this angle, looks like a regular minivan. Right? There's nothing special to see from up here. But as we go around the back, you'll, you'll find that there's actually two engines. I know there's at least one turbo in the mix. We're trying to find the owner, so hopefully if I get the chance to catch up with him, that footage will be in here as well. We're going to ask him about a million questions. We're also going to show you this thing ripping down the drag strip. Now, I don't even know what to think about this. I know that it's really cool but beyond that my mind is just going and wondering and like what is going on if you guys enjoyed this video remember hit the like button subscribe below hit the bell icon you guys know the drill by now so let's go get in some racing and uh check out this van and learn more about it hopefully Give us a rundown, maybe. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually two Chevy men. Okay. We've got uh, stock 3400 V6 in the front with the uh, low mount turbo turbos down under the seats there. And, and then I got another van that I, I cut off right here at the firewall, basically, at the doors and welded the whole uh, subframe, the front part of the uh, uh, strut towers and everything in the back here. Right. And so it has another stock 3400 stock transmission, with, but it's turbocharged. Okay. So I got that all back here. So how do those two work together? Um, they actually don't really. Um, it has uh, two separate throttle pedals. The transmission shift, this is the front transmission, this is the rear one. I just put them both in drive. And then I use... Or sorry, yeah, the rear transmission shifts here. And then this is just, I have micro switches on this little shifter here to run it up through the gears. This just, uh, this just electronically shifts the transmission up through the gears. So, so I run them both in drive. Okay. Now, I'm having trouble getting out of the hole because it, it's got two pop pe throttle pedals and I'm trying to control that along with the brake to hold it staged, you know. Right, right. And I'm, I'm having to leave real soft because I'm having trouble getting my foot feet over to the throttle pedals at the, at the right time, you know. Right, for sure. And I kind of want them to work together so I don't you know so I don't want to put too much stress on this rear rear drive train because the thing weighs 5,000 pounds so right, right. <laughs> I was shocked when it I thought maybe 4,500 it might weigh but I waited at Cecil yesterday okay. and it was, it was 49.60 with me in it Your best pass so far? Uh, this this one was probably the best time. I think it was a 12 0 12 2 okay. 119. I did a 12 3 I think, on the first day at one night. It was almost 120. Was it like a battle to try and get the front and the back to go as fast as each other? Or like no, a lot of people think that. I, right. I don't I don't see any issue with that. Um, like when we drive it down the road, I have to have both engines running because the oil pump in the transmission doesn't run unless the engine's running. Right. So uh, to keep the transmission lubricated, I have to have them both running. But when I'm driving track to track, I'm driving like 80 or 90 percent on the front engine okay and just letting the rear one idle right. i have it in drive but it's in it, it's uh, it's just idling okay and occasionally I'll, I'll operate it just to make sure it's still running and right, right. and that it's uh you know still, still working but the power is probably slightly different the rear one's making about 10 psi boost the front one's making 12 and they're exactly the same otherwise so the front one's probably making a little bit more power right um i feel a little more comfortable running more boost on the front one because it's intercooled right um the rear one's just water injected okay. and it gets really hot under there i've seen before this past my uh, uh, I was a couple cars back yet in the staging lanes and the intake air temp was 130 degrees, so oh, it gets wow. really hot underneath that uh, engine cup. I feel comfortable turning the front one up to 16 or so, maybe the rear one to uh, 12 or 14, so I might try that on the last day. But at this point, my goal is to finish the finish event. I, I only got it together, we put four miles on it before we left for drag week. And we drove about 20 miles on the street before I did my first drag strip pass, so okay. this is all shakedown at this point. So, so have you ever tried to put it on a dyno or would that no, even work? <laughs> no, we, we did the, uh, I dynoed the front engine many years ago uh, with a really small turbo and at 10 pounds of boost, no intercooler or anything and I think it did 238 to the wheels. Um, but that was, that 
was uh, a non-optimized setup. This has a bigger turbo now, intercooled, and better tuning than what I had when I had it on the dyno then. But yeah, so that's was, that was, uh, was more of an ex experiment at that time, and, and uh, since got a little more serious with it. What is uh? What would you say is like one of the most common questions you get asked about it? Like, the synchronization thing. Everybody's okay. how do you get them to work together? Right. And and I don't. They're they're not tied together in any way other than that the transmissions will shift. Uh, the one two shift two. You know the, the the shifts are at exactly the same time. Right. But um yeah, a lot of people wonder how that works. And I've never seen the problem with it. And uh, but I wasn't sure. I thought am I missing something? But it seems right. to be working fine. Now when you go down the strip, is it kind of like you just stab both of the gas pedals yeah. yep. and then it, it works? Yeah. It just goes. Yeah, I try. I try to, uh, like I said, I'm trying to hold it still with the brake and then try and move my feet to the right. Because I have a throttle pedal. I don't know if you can see the throttle pedal here. Is on the inside the, of the brake. Right. The metal. So you can. What I should have done probably is put them both on one side so I could hit them both with one foot. The reason I didn't do that, I thought about like normal driving and stuff, or like trying to do uh, parking lot maneuvers and stuff. I was worried it might be hard to. Uh, to, to do just one or the other. Like, for instance, okay, yeah. if you wanted to go in reverse, you'd have to put both transmissions into reverse. Right. And then hit, then hit the throttle. Right. And I didn't want to have to do that. What I do now, when I get into a parking lot and I want to maneuver, I'll just put the rear engine in neutral and just do my maneuvers on the front end. How long have you had to win? And, like, where did it start? And why? And how's, that, how's that working out for you? Okay. This, this engine, I've always liked this engine. I have an 89 Cavalier. I swapped the 3400 from and one of these vans in too many years years ago, probably 2004 or so. And I ran that with the stick shift transmission. I actually ran drag week with it twice. Uh -huh. um, got that down into the Lavins. But the, tra uh, the transmission started giving me trouble when I, I put a cam in the engine and a larger turbo and the power band went up. Uh, uh, you know, now, still not real high, but maybe 6500 is where I wanted to run to and the transmission would not shift at that. Right. The manual trans would just, I get synchro block. I couldn't shift. No, I, it's time to go automatic. So one of my customers, I own an auto repair shop and one of my customers was selling this van because it was rusting out. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't really eligible to pass inspection right. anymore, and right. uh, uh, and it was just getting kind of kind of run down, you know, and time to get rid of it. And so I said, well, I'll buy it. I'll use the transmission and axles and everything, put it in my Cavalier. And I just didn't quite trust the transmission. I know there's lots of trouble with them, uh, you know, even in stock applications. Uh, uh, and so I wanted to learn a little bit how to work with the transmission, learn how to tune it and so forth before I put it in my car. So to do that, I wanted to make some horsepower. I didn't want to do it nat you know, stock, right. naturally aspirate 3.4 because it wouldn't really tell me a whole lot. So I put the turbo on and, and start playing with the transmission. And then another van comes along for next to nothing. I thought, oh, I can make a dual engine setup. And right. that's, that's what ended. So I had been planning to do it for like two or three years. Uh, had, to, had this van that this all these parts came from sitting in my back lot and, uh, for a couple years. So I got started on it. And, and then when I got signed up here for, for Drag Week this year, I thought, now we're going to make it. We're going to do a dual engine setup for Drag Week. So, um, but I definitely underestimated the amount of work. I right. thought if I'm taking the whole front of another van and putting it in there, it's already pre-engineered, should be ready to go, just weld it in and go, and it, uh, there's a lot more to it than that. Right, lots of fabrication yeah, lots involved. lots of fabrication was involved. And I wanted to have it sealed up and everything because, you know, uh, have the firewall and, and all that. That's just, and I'm not a body, I don't do much body work, so this is all kind of new to me to fabricate sheet metal stuff. And okay. So it, it took a long time to get that done, and a lot of other things. Even the wiring, I thought, oh, that shouldn't be too hard, just, you know, we don't have anything other than the engine controls that we need to do. Mm -hmm. and, and I already had the transmission controls set up with this micro shift, the micro switches on that shifter there. So, but anyway, that took, that took a long time, right. a lot longer than I thought. And uh, so, yeah, it was a mad thrash to get it, get it here. So I'm happy just to be here and having it so far hold it together. Adventure, the Chevy van that has two drivetrains in it. You can see close up on the live feed that he has two shifters in the thing, two complete engines, front and rear.
Do you have any favorite story with this thing along the way? I was sleep, sleep deprived trying to get this thing here for drag week. I started up and ran it for 10 minutes with no water in the engine. I had, what happened, I, I started up, I had a wiring issue. My intent had been start, I'll just start it, make sure everything's running okay in case I have to take it apart or anything. I didn't have uh, water in it or anything and have to deal with that mess. But I'll just start, make sure it runs okay, and, and then we'll fill it with water before we run it any, any, any length of time. And I had a wiring problem. I sorted that out and uh, got it running properly. Dog out, let it warm up here and check everything out. I let it go, so it's probably 10 minutes. So I realized, I grabbed up a rat here just to feel what the temperature was, and it was cold. And, oh man, it was running 10 minutes. It should not, the rat here should not be cold after that. I did it when it hit me instantly when I did. Right. So I was like, well, there, this is it. We're not going to make it. It's not, you know, I cooked the thing. And so I just let it cool down. I gave it a, gave it a, an hour or so and filled it up with water and started up again, and it's, it's been fine. I wasn't happy about that. I'm still a little nervous about that. You know, maybe some problems from that will surface later, but we put 500 miles on it now, and this is a third drag strip pass, so I would imagine if we had a problem, we would have seen it by now.